All right. If you're just now tuning in later on the replay, this is part two. We had some uh, uh, video and audio difficulties. Uh, so we're starting up again, and we're here with appraiser Tom Horn, uh, Birmingham appraiser. And Tom, again, welcome. And uh, just uh, get us caught up to date with uh, who you are, where you're from, and, and that sort of thing. Well, um, I originally grew up in Missouri, like I right. said earlier. I moved down to Florida after college, uh, was in the loan business for a while, eventually got into the appraisal business, and I've been in it now for about 25, 26 years now. Wow, man, yeah. that's that's a long time to be in any one profession. And quite frankly, has it always been where, with uh, the appraisal business where you are kind of your own boss? I mean, where you're making money only what you kill? Right, yeah. I mean, I used to work, you know, you have to work for an appraiser to become an appraiser. I worked for somebody in Panama City, and then I moved up here, worked for another company, and then I went out on my own. But, yeah, I mean, uh, that's pretty much the way it is. I mean, you know, the, the work you, you get paid for. Yeah, the that's doing it. But, <laughs> well, Trey, you got a fan right there in Trey Horton, uh, hey, Trey, a lender. Hey, how you doing, Trey? Uh, he says you're always trying to help everyone. Thank you. Appreciate it. I mean, you can't help it, man. <laughs> you know. So. I'm all about education. I like to educate people um uh, you know appraising is not the sexiest thing but no i, but, I mean i get it but your whenever, numbers guy yeah but whenever you need an appraisal you need the information and that's what i try to do that's right and, and a lot of times unfortunately you guys get a bad rap right yeah right yeah. well back us up just a hair and talk about what an appraiser is and what you do every day okay an appraiser is a professional uh, person that uh, provides an opinion of value, an unbiased opinion of value, okay. um, and to either lenders, uh, you know, be you know, mortgage people, um, banks. Um, I do work for insurance companies uh, for losses. I do work for attorneys and I agents. Didn't, I didn't think about that. So when no. you say losses, are you talking about like a house fire? Right, right. Yeah, some um, not a whole, whole bunch of work there, but I have you know, appraised properties of what they would be worth prior to the law. So the insurance company could make have an idea. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, you know, that's good. And relative to what we do, how much uh, interaction do you have? Who do you have interact with in the real estate transaction? Well, we, um, we get our appraisal order from the bank and it changed a couple of years ago to where there's a middleman now from an, the appraisal management company. So we don't talk to the loan officer a lot because, we can't. Obama decided to cut y'all off. Exactly didn't he? right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we, uh, but you know, uh, so we're contacted by the appraisal management company to get the job, and then we contact the agent if it's a sale, and um, you know, speak with you guys or speak with not you. But, well, um, could be. Yeah, could be. Um, speak with the agent when we're setting up appointments and that, getting information, that type of thing. Gotcha. Well, that's awesome. And then Jenny Williams told him said to tell you hi. Hey, Jenny, how's it going? <laughs> Yeah, Jenny's getting ready to sell her house. Maybe you'll be the appraiser, yeah, right? I may be. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And you know, walk us through. There was ch some changes. Uh, what was that in two thousand? Well, I don't remember the year they changed all the rules. But yeah, it was the Home Valuation Code of Conduct, and that's where the appraisal management companies were brought into the picture. But the thing about what does it, that mean? Um, the Home Valuation Code of Conduct. Well, no, it, no, no. Uh, let's go to these management. Companies. Oh, the management company was supposed to be a uh, a layer of protection between the appraiser and the loan officer, so that we could not uh, collude together to make properties. You know, the values were right, 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 right. Because right. you know, there was a lot of fallout. During the real estate recession, right. with, when uh, properties came in and they they didn't they couldn't sell them for what they said they were worth, you know? right, 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 right. So that's just a layer of protection uh, to where the appraisal management company was. Uh, they would contact us and provide that protection, but you really didn't have to do that. But banks wanted to take the a monkey off their back so that they wouldn't get in trouble for anything. And they so that so their them. answer was to put somebody in between the the lender right and the bank. So. When, let's say David uh, is, he doesn't know, David Arnett uh, from Mortgage Bank, let's say he has a, orders an appraisal. He doesn't know necessarily that you're the appraiser, right? Even though he ordered it. Correct. Uh, each lender has a list of approved appraisers. And whenever he gets a job or whatever, he'll give it to whoever orders it, which is separate from himself, so there won't be any problems, like I said. And then they'll uh, usually go in a rotation. So whoever's on their approved list, they'll just pick the one who's When you up say next. it's in a rotation, it's not in a, he doesn't know the rotation. Oh, let me just Correct. wait one time and it'll get time. To my knowledge, that's not the case. To my knowledge. <laughs> I don't know. That's right. David says that is true. Uh, and then can a buyer pick the appraiser? 
Is that possible? No. Um, it, like I said, it has to be done through the lender th with their approved appraiser. So the, the buyer can't have any say-so because a buyer might pick a friend that's an appraiser. No. <laughs> really? <laughs> it happens, I'm sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, again, that's another uh, protection from something like that happening. Well, I mean, that's, that is crazy. You know, and talk about, you know, in the, in the process, uh, what are your most, when you're going out to, so let's say, uh, let's say you go out to my house today and you want to appraise it for the bank, what, what are the biggest considerations that the consumer should know that you're looking for? Um, the thing that we do that we uh, when we're there, we mm -hmm. measure the house to get the square footage. Of course, they have no control over that because the house is what it is. But with that being said, they do have control over the condition of the house, and we do take that into consideration. So, um, you know, uh, we we have to consider, uh, you know, def what we call deferred maintenance. You know, if something needs fixing, um, and and it, you know, it, when we're there, it's, uh, we have to report that. So that's factored into the value. Mm -hmm. So they, and there's certain loan programs where you have to actually report, and it could become a condition to the contract. Right. That's typically done more with FHA. FHA is concerned with the health and safety of the buyer, which would be... I'm glad the government is so concerned. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> hey, so Emily. The, they hey, require, Michael. They require more, um, you know, things to be fixed before closing than conventional. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. And, and wow, so there's not much the consumer can do once you're there. Right. Uh, you know, they can provide us with information to help, our do our, uh, help us do our job. In, in, uh, they can tell in what us, sense? Uh, they can tell us what improvements they've made to the home over the past, you know, five or ten years. Because within the appraisal report, we have to uh, report if, uh, uh, if kitchens and bathrooms uh, have been, you know, updated. Rented. Yeah. Do you yeah. sometimes have to guess, though? Because let's say you go into a certain neighborhood, do you kind of have an idea of what this neighborhood would typically say have as countertops or... Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you do enough work in a neighborhood and or if you're familiar with the homes, you're going to know what typical finishes are. Um, so, uh, you know, if you go into a neighborhood and it's, um, you know, they've put $50,000 into the kitchen but it's a $50,000 neighborhood mm -hmm. right, right, <laughs> you know, right, right. With, with Formica countertops and, and they've just spent too much money. I mean, you're going to know it, you know, so. What, what would you say is the biggest difference between a real estate agent? Because to the consumer, a lot of times we're appraisers in their head. Oh, because mm -hmm. we know what it'll sell for. Maybe. Right, right. What is the biggest difference? And it's okay to say that you're smarter than us. That is fine. <laughs> But what is the difference between what we do when we value a property versus what you do? Right. Well, I think what you guys try to do is you try to sell it for the highest price that you can get because that's your job for them, yeah. for them you know, and, that, and that's what they want. But it, that has to be tempered with the appraiser who's unbiased. I mean, you guys are not unbiased, and that's okay. I'm very biased, right? <laughs> right. I love my property. Right, exactly. Um, but the appraiser has to come in there, and they have to provide uh, an unbiased opinion of value because the bank wants to know that if they have to take that property back, what can they sell it for? Right, right, right. Yeah. You know, the way I've always looked at it is that I always say y'all come from an engineering-minded standpoint. Mm -hmm. we, we're, agents are worried about the senses. How does it smell, feel, touch? Right. How does it sell to that consumer? Whereas y'all really don't give two hoots yeah uh about that stuff well and i think you mentioned this too i mean we're the we're the numbers people you're the touchy feely people yeah and uh completely and, and that does i think those things do have an effect on value but it's just hard to quantify that so if uh, you know a home might sell you know towards the upper end of the range if it has those types of things you know i mean if, if things uh physical things have been done to the home like updating painting and that mm -hmm. type of thing you know the smell of cookies in the oven ain't gonna do anything no <laughs> no in fact in fact i had one uh Back in the saddle again. Hey, only 92 days until kickoff for the Auburn Tigers. That is right. War Eagle Chester. Uh, you're not an Auburn No, guy. Alabama. Alabama, that's right. <laughs> well, I'm married to one. I, I, man, I can't get away. Except for David. <laughs> David's a big Georgia Tech right, guy. Right, I remember so, that, yeah. Uh, go Jackets. Um, you know, one thing I wanted to ask you, you know, was how do y'all get your data? You know, because we get a lot of complaints from consumers mm -hmm. sometimes. It says, that appraiser didn't take that house down the street, right? Right. So, a, where do you get the data, mm -hmm. and how do you compile it? And is there a special database that y'all have yeah. that we don't? Okay. 
Uh, there's about three sources of data in the Birmingham area, and some other areas may have additional, but you usually have multiple listing service. You usually have uh, public records, and Birmingham is kind of unique because I really haven't seen it anywhere else, but we've got a database that uh, appraisers contribute to. So if I go out and do an appraisal on a property and measure it, I provide that information to this database because... Uh, public records information is not always correct in square footages. Not in Jefferson no. County. You're kidding me. <laughs> yes, um, Jefferson County, if you're watching, you're awful right. on, on that kind of thing. Yeah. But uh, so those three data sources and, okay. and we use, you know, uh, you know, we get our information from that. And if a home has sold for sale by owner. Mm -hmm. and That's uh, a good question. I always talk to the seller. I say, are there any home, homes in this neighborhood that you feel that, you know, that just sold that you feel maybe similar to yours that was a for sale by owner? You know, I can have access to the multiple listing and the, the database that I was talking about, but sometimes there's properties that sell that's, you know, if we have information like the address of the seller, we can look it up. So I always ask them if there's a home that they know of that, mm -hmm. you know, but, uh, you know, th those three da data sources are, are the... So those are your main sources. Yeah. So what, if a, if a consumer needs to challenge, what are the, be if they, if they go, man, this guy has lost his mind, right. he is wrong. <laughs> and nine times out of 10, y'all are right and they're wrong. But there are times right. where y'all y'all miss something. Right. What is, is the, what is the best course of action for a consumer that wants to actually um, make an impact in terms of proving it to you without getting upset? Right. Uh, well, appraisers are, are humans too. We make mistakes. No. But if if um, if 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 you want to challenge an appraisal, it's best to challenge it with factual information, such as maybe they um, did not include a room or the square footage. You know, maybe you got an appraisal in the past and it was a certain square footage, and this appraiser was wrong. Was wrong, yeah. And you know, which it can be. Uh, you know, you get five appraisers out there; they're going to measure a house, and it's going to be five different. I always, should be I always say range. it's like going to a CPA, getting your taxes done. Mm -hmm. Give it to five CPAs. You're going. The bottom line number is never going to be the same. Right. Well, people round when they're measuring. Measuring a yeah. house, so that could Absolutely. be, uh, or you know, maybe uh, they didn't include a, a, an additional acre that was on the property that may have been under another tax. I've seen it all another, another tax parcel ID number. But uh, with that being said, you should have something that's factual, you know, uh, that you can point to and say, well, that's not right. You know, I have this. I have an extra bedroom where you didn't show one, or you didn't even include the basement. Or well, would you say too? Sometimes where there, where where that consumer is wrong is in. Uh, assuming something about a comp. Exactly. Um, and that's what I was going to say. I mean, if they have information about a sale that we used um, that they know is, is different, then they can uh, address that, but they have to go through the lender. They have to go through. They can't come directly to me. Well, they want to come to you. Oh, I know. Well, if if um, if a homeowner or an agent wants to provide any information about a home, they need to do it up front so that it can be taken care of before the appraisal is turned and, in. And quite frankly, y'all don't want to hear from the agent on that stuff. I well, think. Uh, yeah. I mean, any information that they have that can help us do our job, like the updates. You know, either the homeowner or the seller could provide that information about the updates or renovations or whatever, or the agent could give it to us. Or if the agent did a CMA and they have sales, they can provide that to us. Not that I'm going to use it, because we have to qualify yeah, whether they're I'll be honest not. with you. There's some of them. Uh, David's telling his wife, hi. Hi, Courtney. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. D-Ham, how are you? Uh, put on some culture club. Well, the beatbox that's normally here is not here, so uh, we're going to bring him on in a minute. He's at the beach, uh, David, so I apologize for not having... Uh, is that Boy George, right? I think uh, so, yeah. yeah. Yacht Rock. He's listening to some <laughs> yacht rock. Uh, anyway, so let's talk about that. Now, one thing that we've done, in 2011, we, we really changed our business when we added professional photography to every listing. didn't matter if it was a $500 listing or it was a $5 million listing. We did that, and we added pre-listing appraisals. Yeah. yeah. Two big things that, quite frankly, transformed our business. Mm -hmm. And talk to us about the benefits of a pre-listing appraisal in your mind uh, to a, a person that's thinking about putting their house on the market? Well, a pre-listing appraisal is good because it's going to um, kind of... <laughs> Your wife. Your wife. Hey, here. what's going on, Gina? <laughs> Make Tom sing. <laughs> um, the pre-listing appraisal is going to provide 
an accurate indication of value based on market data. So uh, if it's done correctly, then there shouldn't be a problem uh, with the value on the back end whenever the uh, appraiser comes in for the mortgage company and does the appraisal there. The only difference might be a sale that occurred after that initial appraisal. And in this market, it's going to be a better comp usually. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and a, a way to get around that as well, whenever I do a pre-listing appraisal, I include active listings and pending sales as well. So those pendings could be actually closed by the time that, that you know, happens. Yeah. You know, one thing that I was going to, you know, share with you, you know, is, is I've also called you on the back side when we've had trouble. We got the pre-listing appraisal yeah. done on the front side from you. And then on the back side, we had some issues. Well, one of the benefits is that we can get you to call that other appraiser because he's going to listen to you, mm -hmm. but everyone else is interested here. Right, they're an interested party. Exactly, and yeah. he—they're more likely to listen to you to say, "Hey, did you think about this?" Yeah, or that. Well, um, I've—I I, kind of tread lightly on that. Yeah, you know, um, because you know, it's an opinion of value. The appraiser's opinion of value. So, but in some of these areas, though, right, that we, we can go different ways and get a different number. Sure, and and that's that's what's important about an appraiser is that they have to have the knowledge of the area. Um, I'm not so sure it's happening now as much as it was three or four years ago, but there were a lot of appraisers coming from out of the state to come over to do appraisals, and they would not uh, have the correct data sources, the ones I told you right. about. They didn't know the area, um, and they could get the values off. Well, so. I can tell you this. We we had more trouble for a long time. You know there's a bank with the stagecoach that, that's yeah. out there, right? Yeah. <laughs> Their appraisers, they were literally bringing in appraisers mm -hmm. from outside the area. Yeah. In an effort to really screw the consumer, right. because they were making money off of the, what you were talking about was the uh, appraisal management company, exactly, yeah. right? And and they were really screwing you guys because mm -hmm. they were trying to bring down y'all's revenue, right, right, and and, and so that caused us problems because mm -hmm. you had someone that may or may not be a member of the MLS, which is kind of a vital tool yeah. in what you said. Exactly. And um, if uh, homeowners or sellers or agents need to be able to ask that appraiser, hey, have you appraised in this area? You know, uh, do you have... I'm the, shocked. <laughs> do you have the correct data sources? Right. And if the agent doesn't think, you know, if they have a legitimate complaint about that appraiser that, hey, you know, they come from out of the area, they don't know it, uh, know the area, then they might want to contact the lender and say, hey, can we get another appraiser? You know, I highly, highly recommend that. Uh, and that's not to say that some appraiser um, that lives out of the area may not work here all the time. That's different than somebody just coming over here for... That's uh, what was happening, though, yeah, yeah, quite frankly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, you know, that's just... It's, it's fascinating that... Uh, and one thing that we haven't seen amongst the appraisers... And granted, it's just like our profession or any profession, really. You get people at all stages sure, of their career. Right. And you're actually very proactive into the community. Oh, Some yeah. of them want to lay low and not be heard from. Right. Yeah. Um, and th that's what I found. That's why, you know, about six or seven years ago, I started blogging because there was. Uh, What's the name of your blog? It's, like, I tell that everybody Yeah, know. it's BirminghamAppraisalBlog.com, where I try to answer any question that can come up that uh, agents have or lenders have or homeowners have. Um, but we didn't do a good job of talking to, uh, you know, the owners or the agents and that type of thing. So you guys didn't understand how we did what we do. No. And no. So you're, now, you're about the only one, though, yeah, that well, is out there. I try to talk to uh, offices, agent offices, as much as I can. Um, in order to explain to them and educate them on the appraisal process. And to be honest, agents, you know, I mean, there, there's always kind of been this uh, right here with agents and appraisers. But I think so. <laughs> but with all the offices I've been to, you guys have just been so great about wanting to learn as much as you can. I haven't, you know, had any, any hostility at all. Well, we're, we're okay with fist fights. Oh, yeah, no, that's good because I'm a, I'm a wuss, so I, I don't know uh, if you need to be worried about me. But, you know, you know, one thing I wanted to ask you, you know, there's a perception out there the appraisers are the ones that are holding back because, quite frankly, the market is so hot that we're able to get stuff sold for more money than we ever have in terms of the list price. Right. And there are times. So the perception is that y'all are holding prices from being able to go a lot higher. What say you? Well, the thing I have to say is that appraisers don't set values. They report values based on market data. And that's where our education, our experience, and knowledge of an area comes in. Um, uh, whenever we do an appraisal, um, there are, and especially in an appreciating market, there's always the possibility that our data may, might lag behind oh, the, sure, the market. Sure. So to kind of get behind or around that, I mean, we use a minimum of three closed sales in an appraisal. But as I said earlier, I try to use listings and pendings. Um, a pending sale 
where everything is, you know, it's passed all the tests. You know, the, the person's got approved, they got the appraisal, it's appraised, and they're just waiting on it to close. And so you know that that's a good sale. Yeah, that is a good sale. A pending right. sale that just went on a contract last night is not. You know, but but the, the was. yeah, but the other pending is is the best because it's like the the hot pancake on the griddle. I mean, it's it's right there. It, it's what's happening right now. So we try to temper that with the closed sales to come up with a value. And, and appraisers are getting more into looking at large sums of data, market data, through the use of Excel spreadsheets and regression analysis, where we can see trends. That, so will you give the benefit? Because I think the consumer doesn't understand. Yeah. If we're only looking backwards, yeah, how yeah. we're ever going to go forwards, yeah. So where is that forward in your mind? Um, in other words, if I have a house, it's three hundred, and yeah. and quite frankly, if no one can go above that, yeah, right, because we can't look back. Yeah. How is that next one going to three hundred five? Right. Well, we. It's important to be able to look at what is happening in the market, which is where you guys come in. Because if um, a homeowner has, you know, they say they want a certain price, yeah. but you say that ain't going to happen. Yeah. Then say that all the time. Yeah, then uh, then that's what you need to do. But they the, the price has to be set based on supply and demand. So um, it's okay to set the uh, the price at a certain level if the data is, is showing that, that tr it's trending upwards. And I think a lot of times that... Can you all apply a, dis a rate to that? Oh, and, yeah, and yeah. And say, we'll give it 5% because of... Well, we have... Yeah, we can, but that has to be based on market data, trend line analysis whenever we're looking at the Do you submit sales. that to whoever you're talking to? Yeah. Um, I mean, if we make a positive adjustment for the uh, for um, a change in the market, then we have to um, notate that well, within that, the this appraisal. Is, this is really interesting because I don't think most people know that y'all can do that. But something that I want to point out and that I know that you guys weren't aware of, or at least some people that I've spoken to, is that it's helpful to submit uh, um, pending contracts on the same property. Like if I'm doing an appraisal on a property, if they have three or four backup contracts, that's, wow. showing, that's showing demand for that property. That's, I mean, yeah, no idea yeah. that that was possible. Because, yeah. I mean, I, we've had where we've had three, four, five. Kind of, so in other words, yeah. let us help you. Exactly, yeah. And that's, um, you know, that's hard information it's it's just not hearsay because if you've got the contracts to back it up and you can show that to us then that you know if when we come in at the upper end of the range if that contract is at the upper end of the range then that's going to provide uh information to help us support that value yeah right yeah right and then yeah. talk to me a little bit about uh the impact that renter if you go into a community and there's a lot of rentals mm -hmm. in particular neighborhoods because we're hearing from consumers that are saying man we just don't like they're going to bring the value of our neighborhood down right are they really bringing the value of the neighborhood down from a economic standpoint? We don't have to talk about the impact, mm -hmm. you know, right. of beer cans and everything else <laughs> in the front yard, but that can happen to homeowners. So, oh yeah, what's but, the impact? But that has to be proven in the market. We can't just say, well, it's going to bring property values down. That's just like saying that uh, a suicide in a home is going to bring its value down because I that's had a, a great point. I had a situation like that where that was not the case. You know, we have to have market evidence to support that. Another thing is like. A home uh, located next to railroad tracks, you know, that were, um, you know, the the. David's sound. asking, so backup contracts do help. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, that provides information that we can go on to help support that higher value. You know, that along with all the other information, we really don't want to base a value on one part, uh, one segment of information. We have to, you know, include it all and look at the whole. Um, the, you know, the, the whole scope, the of whole thing. body of work exactly. here, if you will. Exactly. Yeah. So that that I mean, that, what other things? Is there anything like that else? That well, can help? a lot of times people um, limit their definition of a neighborhood to one or two blocks, you know, around their house. Who does that? When you say who does? That? Um, well, owners and agents, because uh, yeah. agents have said, "Well, there's no comps," and I said, "Well, you, you're going to have to go to another place, what we call a competitive market area, meaning that if there was no home in this neighborhood, where would that buyer go?" They might go, you know, four blocks away because you know it's the same school system. It's 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 in a similar location to their work. Are you now? Because I think what we're used to is is the criteria being a half mile or so as a crow flies. Yeah. But can you go beyond that if it's justified? It, you can, um, and I and I do. I have. I mean, I can go you know, a mile away. And a lot of times those really aren't Fannie Mae guidelines. They're lender guidelines. Lenders don't want you to go too far away. But if there are no sales within a neighborhood, you can go about a mile away or wherever it's at 
as long as it's what we call a competitive market area and a buyer would typically go there. Now, I always give this example that uh, an area right outside of Mountain Brook that's in the county, you know, different school system, uh, huh. pretty, pretty nice houses, yeah. but, you know, one block over, you couldn't use a comp there because it's Mountain Brook. So, um, you know, you, you have to know... Sort of rich people live in exactly. case you're wondering. <laughs> Um, but you have to know where to be able to look. So if, if the price, if the high price in, in your um, subdivision is only at a certain amount, but maybe a mile away in another neighborhood, but it's within that competitive market area that's higher, you know, you can use sales from within there to support that higher value. Gotcha. Wow. Yeah. I mean, th this is fascinating. And, you know, one thing I want to ask you before, uh, David Arnett, get ready. I'm about to come to you um, for you to ask a few questions to Tom. But, uh, you know, what, do, what is the difference between a good appraiser and a bad appraiser? Well, I don't think any appraiser sets out to be bad, you know. Um, but again, like I said, an appraiser is only as good as the data that they have. So an appraiser must subscribe to uh, um, sources of data that they find uh, accurate. So, like I was saying about the people coming in from out of town, sure. you know, they were coming out, in, you know, into this area. And this was when everything was kind of slowing down. They came over here because there wasn't work wherever they were at. Um, but they have to know the area. They have to have accurate data sources. And so I think an appraiser has to know their limitations. Uh, so if uh, if, if they, you're not if you're not qualified, exactly. they need to be telling people. Right. I, I'm licensed in the state of Alabama, but I would never appraise down <laughs> in Mobile because I yeah. don't know the area. Yeah. You know, I only right. do where my data sources are. You know, around the the metro. Well, and you've been area. good about telling us when you weren't comfortable with a certain type of property. Right. 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 I yeah, mean, exactly. Uh, yeah. Uh, it takes a certain expertise, you know, to appraise a thousand acres or a farm that's an income producing farm or something like that. Absolutely. Well, let's see if David's got anything uh, see if david's coming on board thanks everybody for staying with us and this is part b uh we obviously got started and weren't able to uh keep that feed so we're back so let's see if we can get him added he's probably no telling what he's doing <laughs> david put the clothes back on there he is there he is oh you're in the water now oh yeah we're in the water i had to bring it to you from the pool we got uh, we got the crowd behind us. So, Tom, tell me this. Uh, I know you got a lot of uh, what's that? You have a bunch of balls behind you. Yeah, these uh, the, the Seacrest Beach balls. They're pretty pretty famous. They got a lot of rules down here, by the way. I'll tell you that. Uh, you, you're not supposed to have your own uh, toys in the pool, but they give you a bunch of beach balls. So that's good stuff. Hey, David. Uh, do you have any questions for Tom? Yeah, Tom, how do we deal with this? Uh, we got multiple offers, and obviously we've got a bunch of uh, uh, demand for houses. Are you guys able to factor that in to the price? Uh, just because, you know, we got a bunch of buyers going in above list price, but that doesn't mean that's where the property is going to appraise for, right? Well, Colin and I was just talking about that. If you have a property – and um, you have multiple contracts on it, that information you can provide to the appraiser to help support that higher value. You know, and, and we don't just look at that, but it's a piece of the puzzle we can use to, for, to help us tell the story of the value of that property. So we can consider those multiple offers and it's, it's good for the agent or uh, anybody else that has access to that to provide that to the appraiser. That, yeah, that makes sense. So tell me, what's the um, what's the toughest type of property to appreciate in this type of market? Condominium, farm, townhouses. Well, it's going to be the the, the properties that are are unique, you know, because there's the demand for those are, are not as great as the um, you know the homes that are typical of the different places. You know, there's a lot of activity, condo activity downtown, so that market's doing pretty good and getting pretty good appreciation and and just any area that has a lot of similar housing is going to be you know appreciating a lot better than the unique properties yeah that makes sense well guys i wish y'all could be down here with me this is uh it's a lot of fun out here so it's, it's good hey, hey hey by the way ben just turned out the lights on us again what's that ben turned out the lights oh, okay apparently well, it's five o'clock yeah, if you just move around, they'll, they'll come back on. Hey, there we go. Uh, but anyway, man, say, uh, what else you got for us? 
Man, just this uh, this area down here is a lot of fun. Uh, in between Rosemary and Alice Beach, uh, hope you guys get to get to come down here and check it out. It's just just past Panama City. Uh, there's a lot of houses that are not on the beach, which is kind of interesting. Kind of like the situation here with the pool, and uh, it's, it's a little drive to the beach or take a tram to the beach. But I don't know, it's just an interesting, cool little area. Uh, a lot of fun. Hey, uh, Michael Bruno says he wants you to show Courtney. Uh, I think Courtney is. Uh, I think she's over there underneath the the umbrella, getting In some the shade. shade. Yeah. All right, man. Well, uh, we'll see everybody uh, same time, same place next week, won't we? You guys have a beautiful week. You too, man. Have fun. All right. All right. See you later. All right. And uh, let's bring us back here. Tom, we really do appreciate you coming in with us sure. today. Yeah. Yeah. If and anybody has any questions, they can contact me. They can look at, for my blog. They can make a call. And what's your website? It's BirminghamAppraisalBlog.com. And phone number? It's 205-243-9304. All right. We'll see you same time, same place next week. Y'all have a great week. Thanks Talk to lot. you soon. Bye.